Welcome to NAFA Inner Circle, a show where we talk to industry insiders like actors, directors, cinematographers, writers, producers, presented by New England International Film Awards. It's a pleasure to have you here, Iflan Lethen. Um, you are the director of photography of the film Final Bow, right? Yes. Nice to meet you, Aldrin. I'm glad to be here. Man. Well, thank you very much for coming. Give us a little introduction, how you start doing, being a director of photography, for example. Well, it's, it's happened slowly. You know, I, I did engineering mostly before 2014, but I did. Um, I came to the States in 2000 as a lifeguard and I applied for engineering. As I stayed in New York before I moved to Detroit, I worked at a restaurant with someone who was a camera operator and he got me into it and a friend of mine. And since then, I, could, I was always shooting on the weekends. And during the week, once I, once I had to move to Detroit, I kept shooting. And uh, during, the, during the week, I did engineering. On the weekends, I did uh, filming for corporate, commercials, documentaries. And uh, the first movie, I'll, the movies I... Technically, I get in accidentally. I mostly shot, used, I mostly used to shoot documentaries and commercials and corporate before, and but I had the own red camera. And one of the productions, uh, one of the films in Detroit, tried to rent it. I said, I, "You cannot rent it. I, you have to hire me as an operator." I worked on that set, and the director. We had we got really good working relationship with the director, uh, Lance Kavas. And uh, since then, we I've been working and I shot multiple movies for, for him as a cinematographer. Where are you coming from? I'm, I'm Hungarian. My family is Hungarian, but I grow, grow up in Slovakia. I used to be Czechoslovakia. But... Oh, very interesting. We're going to see a little piece of the film Final Bow. I will, I'm going to ask you some few questions after. Hey, hola. 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 Nada, no te preocupes. Oh my God. I think one day I want a family, kids, my own home. Is that stupid? We have a teenager and her name is Carmelita. Who adopts a 15 year old girl? Doesn't this concern you? Sister. I'm not going anywhere. Promise? I promise. I don't know all the details about what happened to you. But Sister Esperanza is very concerned about you. We all are. Final Vogue, very intense film. From the aspect of cinematography, can you tell us um, how do you construct the photography? Yeah, so when a director, Ruben Islas, took me out to show me the location, um, showed me the landscape, uh, right away I thought this is, has to be uh, a, a wide format. Yeah, so I actually pushed it even further. It was kind of risky. I pushed it further to, to, to 270. One to two seventy six to get that lamp wide landscape shots, and that was my first motivation. And obviously, I you know as all cinematographers, we were working with a low budget, so I have to some of the you know you had to adapt based on the budget and based on look what, what, what you're going for. Yeah. So you are you you said you say that you use a lot of wide wide yeah. So the wide landscapes because uh, Baja they have beautiful landscapes with all the hills and that motivated me to go uh, a, a wide format more than wider than cinescope. Cinemascope, right? Like yeah, films wider than cinemascope. Actually, it's wider as two seventy six. Yeah, that's was very used in in the forties and fifties. I remember seeing a lot yeah. of. Remember the, the films that were gigantic screen. I, I yeah, I, I'm coming from Cuba and we have um we have that old fashioned cinema scope film and the screen was like way, way very wide. So when I saw your film, it reminded me a little bit of that. Yeah, it was kind of like the hateful eight kind of the wide uh, similar format. Mm -hmm. But we used as for you know, I used the Alex LF and I'd use the entire with the with the two time anamorphics. I, I'm not a big I'm not, I wouldn't say I'm not a big fan of anamorphic. I'm not that, I'm not, haven't used anamorphic that much, but I thought this project would be perfect for that, just so I can stretch the, the, the open gate. Do you use not only a lens, do you also do, did the film use drone as well? Yeah, yeah, we use, yeah, we use the, the Alta, Alta, no, Alta 8. Mm. Uh, so shots with actually, I was, Mini used the Alexa Mini for that, not the LF. 
Um, we use the S35 version. This film, what was the, the connection with, um, I'm sure you had a, a lot of um, planification with the director. And um, did you guys design the shot uh, way ahead or you guys were discussing it while you were shooting it or how did, how did that work? No, yeah. So we 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 have a very similar, um, a very similar view. What how to shoot? How, we had very synced on how we're gonna shoot this. As far as not too much moving, more like frames. You know, I'm not a big kind of moving a camera unless you need to. And Ruben, in the same way, is a very very logical director. He's not try to impress the audience with cool stuff, but he's trying to tell actually a real story. But, you know, these days it's very very rare to find a director like that. Yeah. You know? To work with everybody try to use the tools because we have all these cool tools but you know everybody try to show off with it why don't we just go back to the basics and try to but important is what's in the image yeah this is one of the thing i saw in the film that yeah it's very static and the thing is going on is going on up there you know the acting the movie but the 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 camera shooting is very static yeah it, it, it catch my attention very interesting because you're right right now everything is about a lot of going on down there <laughs> it's like shooting camera people is exploring and doing a lot of experimental but this one is more of a classic yeah and this was a scene of everybody me and robin were, this, this scene played out and then there was the the basement scene was very interesting because me and him were looking at the monitor and everybody was like go coverage covers and we looked at each other director or not just keep it one shot this if we shoot coverage they Everybody wants to push us into the, to edit it in. We're not gonna get coverage. And look, people try to fool us. Even editing room. Why didn't you guys get coverage? This is perfect. This is plays out like a play. If you cut it up, the entire mood, the entire energy, the entire magic of it would have been completely uh, off. It wouldn't have be the same. Filming a, a movie like this, it must have a lot of challenges. What do you think would be one of the biggest challenges you have shooting this film? You know, I mean, obviously, when you're doing, we did it with a very low budget. I mean, when you're doing it very low budget, you're always fighting time and fighting uh, locations. You know, you don't have the luxury of light a lot. I mean, I don't light, a, I, I'm very natural. I do not light. Like, I'm mostly like, take away light sometimes. And I think it's it's mostly just time, time and uh, put everything because it's not just as many as all departments working together and we're all pushing each other to get everything set. Decorator, everybody would try to get as much as we can. Higher budget is the same issue. We, what, what I learned is no matter what's the budget we're facing, it's just a different level. Yeah, but, uh, but when you say time, you mean that trying to get everybody together or you guys were pushed to finish everything in a certain time? We try to push a certain time and, and then you have to make hard choices. And you have a certain vision. I mean, I always say, if you can get your, you have, you go into it with a perfect vision, like oh, I want all this, all this, all this, but then the reality kicks in when you have only, you know, 18 days to shoot something sometimes even less sometimes a bit, bit more i think this was like 20 days and then you just have to if you get your vision like 60 75 percent you you are a winner and oh so you have only 20 days to shoot this yeah. oh wow well that's that's pretty yeah, so <laughs> that, that, that's always you know i mean when you're working uh, on a low budget uh, then that, that's just nature but that same happens in a big budget <laughs> Yeah, no, I, would, I was I was about to say the same thing. It doesn't matter the budget that the, yeah. you have, you have to put. The Those team. the problems are bigger because then then it's it's become bigger, so you have more stuff. The bigger stuff you're doing, then now you. I always say making a movie is trying to fit a 300 pound pig in a paper bag without ripping the paper bag. Yeah, making a movie is a very big, very very stressful. See my gray I'm, hair. So. I'm very yeah, very stressful and it's very enjoyful I mean, stress. Also. You have to get. Um, How can I say it? you have to adapt to many different ideas because it's not the movie, you are not the only one making it, it's everybody. Around. And then there's a real, reality what's called budget. And, and <laughs> we have to we cannot go over budget and then we have to all compromise a bit here and there and see you try to make your smartest choices as far as okay, what well, is not gonna compromise much the quality, but we still save money. When you're doing the designer of the lighting of the film you worked together with the lighting people or you just design it yourself and talk to the director because some people works in a different levels and to create a atmosphere and the specific color 
it's a lot as well. And I, I'm very visual. I love to, the, the visuality of the films to me is the most, for me, yeah. uh, it's the most important. Uh, everything is important. I shouldn't say that, that yeah. but to me, the visual is what it captured my eye. So uh, based on based on the mood of food, every project is, I, I go have a bit of different approach because it's just every project needs a different it depends on the mood and then the director vision and all this comes to you know ruben gives me lots of freedom he describes me what you know what he kind of want and lots of freedom and then in a set if he doesn't like something is very straight up for what i like you know i like to work with people who can raise their opinion because that gives me information and i can fix it because in the end that's the movies you know we have to make sure cinema the first is not we, we we have to abide the be making the movie for a director not for ourselves and for for the audience too so you know if he's if he asked me to change something and then, then i have to respect that and then go for it yeah and then and if, if he's also there for me to give him technical advice and if something would not work then we discuss it if i disagree we have kind of it's it's okay to have a disagreement that's not that's part of the process a creative process and we discuss it and then we come up we have never had an issue not come up with a conclusion as far as what would be better for the movie and we can do sometimes we do two options when we have time then look this i give you this for safety and let's try your risky part yeah and 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 then you, we like to take risk. Sometimes we don't get the safety, and we just go for a risk. We look at each other, and we say, "Let's go for it." And then, and you know what? I hope it's good. <laughs> so, <laughs> hope it works out. And then you have to go for. Otherwise, you're not inventing. If you're not trying to something, you know, something uh, different, then you're not inventing. Then. And a style. Do you guys and um, as a director of photography, in my case, I use a lot of references. When I read a script, I try to visualize. In sometimes I base a shoot in a painting that it came into my mind or a film that I remember I like. Do you use any a specific um, reference from any any other films or any other art? Yeah, yeah, definitely. There's, they're bringing in, you know, they're bringing in other movies as far as example. I think I most use that for problem solving. Like if if I if I facing an issue, I'll go and check how how other movies solve that problem. You know, it, 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 I do a reference and I'll I do like I envision kind of myself what would be the the look, the style of it, and then try to find projects what are similar. Yeah, and then to see what I like from them and what frames. I mean, I, I do. I'm influenced from Tarkovsky and some of the old and, and painters as far as cinema because of, I like single source lighting. I don't like complex lighting because I think it makes natural realistic images and the framing. Some of the Tarkovsky is beautiful framing. Framing that's I use a lot influenced me a lot yeah but, but there's many you know there's many other sources I use as far as and then me and uh, Rubin or other directors will look at. He sometimes bring look. I, I would like to hear this to look like this. I love this, you know. I love this movie, and he shows me, and then then I go from there. I try to not copy because you don't want to use it as just as a reference. Yeah. No, it's reference because I think everything to it's an art. You can you you create yeah. stuff, but you have reference, even feelings or each situation that you have. So sometimes. It yeah. comes into my mind. So, it, oh, wow. So I was about to ask you that. What is your favorite uh, film director or cinematographer? Uh, yeah. You, you I, have have one. I, I like, you know, as I said, I like uh, Tarkovsky. I like Christopher Tarkovsky. Nolan. I think uh, great. Uh, the Volanyu is doing beautiful stuff. Lately, there's a new old guy. So Dennis Volanyu, yeah. Um, obviously, Kurosawa, amazing. For, he, his movies, amazing photography. Has, his photographer is great. And Kubrick. Hitchcock. Actually, we just about to shoot a movie. It's kind of Hitch in, in Louisiana. It's kind of influenced by Hitchcock. It's because very... Yeah, yeah. So, and cinematographers are like, you know, they all have their own. I like Hoyta van Hoyta, Beacons, obviously. Yeah, and, um, you know, one of my favorites is Children of Man. I think shot by Chivo. One of my I, favorite recent movies. Very Good. naturalistic, very organic. Got. Do you have any upcoming project after these? Yeah, so uh, right now we're doing pre-production. We're supposed to start shooting on the fourth. As Hayself, it's a uh, it's a thriller horror, um, thriller horror detective stuff. It's we're shooting it uh, Baton Rouge, Louisiana, and then we're supposed to shoot. Me and Ruben supposed to shoot soon. Gringo Hunters two. 
Dante, a couple of other projects in the line. I think we're going to have a hands full next year. Oh, wow. Well, that's that's amazing. Yeah. I'm very, very glad because that's what we need. A lot of work. <laughs> yeah, we got, um, you know, I'm uh, thank, thanks for the Grandava team and uh, Rubin. I've been very, uh, very busy work. I mean, I spend all sorts of time in post-production doing the grading for the movie. Just the final touches, putting some final touches uh, as far as the look of it. One of the things we do is we want to show a new people, a student, and people interested in the film industry. We want to guide them somehow. And I want you to, if you, in, in a few words, tell me an advice for any a student or someone who's interested in become a DP, a director of photography for a film, if you have any guide words to tell them, what would it be? It, it depends how you feel and you should go for it, you know, and you find out uh, the way you find out soon where, where it's up to you. I wait. Usually I, I see people I work with beginners. You can tell in the beginning whether they're going to be good or they need to work a lot more to get You know, that this is something you have, you have the eye. Some people have the eye when they, you can tell they don't have experience, but they know how to frame up stuff. And I think, I think once you start, you have to jump in and do it. You're not going to ever find out whether what, what you're good at. Yeah. And I, and I, I, I advise everybody, if you, that's how you feel, if you want to be a DP or a cinematographer, you should jump in and, and try it, see where it, where it goes. You have to dive in. The first job is going to be very stressful because you're, you're going to, especially if you, get a big you know land a bigger project for your first but that you have to fight through you have to get through that can i say it's a shouldn't lot of be work afraid. shouldn't <laughs> be afraid to jump in. it is it is it, can i ask it it is a lot of work right it's a, it's a lot a lot of work it's it could be stressful i would say if, if first you know and then you get used to it then you you know you organize yourself you have a short list and make sure you organize you You know, you have to make, you have to be ready to make compromises and, and work with the producers. It's not all about, not all about you. It's all, it's all about the team. Yeah. You know, you can be selfish. That's one thing I see a lot in this industry. It's coming from engineering where it's I was culture shock. Do you uh, have to do... Of, too much a bit of our ego and selfishness sometimes happens on set. Oh, no, no. Yes, of course. Every, every, everybody wants to um, yeah. show their brightness in and um, when you're shooting i mean every yes. specific uh, category just to call it somehow my question is um as a director of photography do you have to answer very strongly sometimes i'm not talking about specific this project in general it's very on an individual basis i mean every director is a bit different some are giving me more freedom some have more what they want more knowing you know and uh some you know some are stronger some are not as strong you know and and if, if as a deep you always you have to be true to yourself if you're working with a stronger director then you should listen and take learn from him and not try to your ego get in a way and and uh it is the opportunity he choose you for a reason maybe you have an eye that's why you're working with him but he has maybe more experience than you you should not try to uh you should try to really uh listen even you know if he's a stronger if, if it's the other way around don't try to be try to help that director not try to show him that you have more experience but try to help him to make the movie and ad advise him smartly you know and not uh try to you know not try to it, it, be be ready to to do uh take some risks you know if he asks something thing you think it's not technically not correct try to give it to him and also make sure you have a backup uh try to propose him a backup you let's do your way and then let's do let's do a backup because i was in a situation i thought And then you have to add, yeah, you have to, I worked with a director who wasn't like a first time director in, uh, in Michigan. And, and I thought, um, this shot is very difficult to pull off and it's not going to work. We tried it and it worked and I was wrong. Even if I was more experienced, you shouldn't try to give them, you know, something what is, you know, maybe, maybe you think it's technically wrong, but it might work in edit. <laughs> What I'm saying. Yeah, no, no, very important to them. Um, that's what I want to ask you because I think uh, one of the things very important is to have very open mind. And sometimes you have to do stuff like this one that you thought is not going to work, but it did work. 
work and I was wrong and I had I had longer ex more experience than the person that was his like almost first project I didn't argue too much with him but I in my head I was thinking he's wrong and he was right you know so that's why we have to be careful when, you know don't don't get too cocky when I'm no very important no, because people have an idea and people think that what you see is a you know it's very easy to do and it's not it's a lot of working together and you know stuff sometimes you have to do Yeah. Like you said earlier, two or the one for safety and one that I want to do and one let's do let's try this one that I think it does it's not going to work, but at the end it work. So you learn from that. That's very very. Interesting. Especially the film industry, you can shoot this. Everybody thinks that way is the right way, but you can shoot a movie hundred different way and it's all correct. It's literally there's many ways to shoot and create an emotion. It's a bit different emotion, but it doesn't mean it's not the right emotion. You have to respect somebody has a different vision. You follow that, yeah. You have to adapt. Perfect. Anything else you want to share with us? Um, thank you, guys. I just want to thank you guys to put me on this interview. Is I'm very, I'm very excited that our movie got selected. You know, and uh, I'm excited for Grand Avati. They are really, really, really great people to work with. And the director Ruben Islas, he really passionate director and put a lots of. He's putting lots of thought and, and um, work into his projects with his team, like Dan Ford. And Evelyn, the movie no, was not only selected, the movie won the yes. best feature film in the England International Film Award. We are very, very happy for the film. We're very, very happy for you to have you here with us. And we wish you the best and a lot of success in the future. Thank you very much. Thank you, Aldrin. Thank you so much.